Do you often feel like a failure no matter what you do? Do you feel like something's off when others see you as competent and successful and do you expect their opinion to change soon? Do you find it hard to pursue and attain goals? If you said yes to any of these questions, you may be psychologically stuck in a sense of failure or having failed and maybe subconsciously recreating failure and a feeling or sense of having failed. Stay tuned to understand how and why this happens and how to step out of it. Hey everyone, welcome to Becoming an Expert at Self-Leadership. I'm Micah, I'm a psychologist, and today I want to discuss another one of those feelings and mindsets that we can get emotionally and psychologically addicted to, that we can get stuck in, and then subconsciously do things to recreate that experience over and over. And today, the mindset I'd like to discuss is a sense or feeling of having failed or being a failure. Where does this come from? When animals are born, they have different levels of maturity at birth. Baby turtles are immediately on their own and are ready to go. Baby giraffes can immediately stand and walk. Other animals though are much less developed at birth and keep growing and developing for many years after birth. We humans belong to the latter group and especially our brains keep growing and developing neural connections that are pretty fundamental for life for many years after birth and especially during those years. This means we're specifically vulnerable after birth and during childhood. And the experiences we make during those years get etched into our brains pretty deeply. This is how patterns that we recreate, something I like to call emotional and or psychological addiction, form. We absorb the emotional atmosphere of our childhood and then expect the rest of our lives to be that way. We continue to act in alignment with the emotional atmosphere of our childhood, even when it keeps us stuck. So if you're stuck in a sense of being a failure or having failed, that's the remnants of the neural imprints your childhood left in your brain. These experiences could have been actual experiences of failure, or it could just be a sense of being a failure that you picked up on by the way your caregivers treated you. Ask yourself when you first started feeling like a failure, what those experiences were. Go back, reflect on your past, your childhood, and try to find moments where this all started. These could be experiences in which you were treated as if you were a failure by people that were important to you back then, parents, caregivers, family members, teachers, peers, siblings. Your parents may have communicated that they're disappointed in you a lot, they may have been overly critical with your performance in school, at sports, art, music, or whatever it was that was important to them. They may have responded in extreme ways to small mistakes that are part of growing up. Or maybe you were compared to a sibling and made to feel inferior. You may have felt inferior to your peers because of a characteristic of your family. Maybe your family was less affluent or educated compared to the families of your peers. It could also be that you struggled with an issue that made it hard to perform and led to actual experiences of failure like a learning disability, ADHD, or a background of immigration that made it hard to understand and perform in a new culture. It could also be that nobody took the time to teach you basic self-leadership skills so you didn't know how to regulate your emotions and motivation 
or how to structure your day so that you would be able to achieve well. How is this feeling recreated? Once someone has a mindset of, I'm a failure, it changes the way they go through life. So much so that they will subconsciously keep recreating failure, which then reinforces their core beliefs around failing, failure, achievement, and their sense of, I'm a failure, which they started out from. Here are some ways you may be keeping yourself stuck in failure and maybe recreating failure in your life. You may be discounting your positive qualities and natural strengths and hyper-focus on your flaws and weaknesses. You may think in all or nothing terms about achievement. Either I'm the best or I might as well not try at all. You may generalize from one mistake to other areas of achievement, like thinking, if I'm not super good at language, I'm incapable in all other areas of performance as well. You may overestimate your sphere of how much you should be responsible for and blame yourself for mistakes that happened due to some factors that weren't under your control. You may avoid taking on new challenges, investing into learning and growth because you feel like your failure at any new thing is guaranteed from the start. You may not be taking the steps necessary to move forward in your career. You may be self-sabotaging in other ways, meaning you don't really apply yourself to the tasks that you're responsible for. You procrastinate. You allow yourself to get distracted easily. You may be handing in sloppy work or you may be acting in unfriendly or grumpy ways with colleagues or clients. You may have chosen a career path that is mismatched with your strengths and interests and assume that this is the way it always has to be. You may have chosen goals that are extraordinarily hard to achieve for anyone and you can't stop trying to achieve them anyhow. You may be busy all the time and working too much in compensation of your sense of not being good enough. How to stop recreating a sense of or actual failure. To step out of this trap, you first of all need to become fully aware of it. So detect where it came from in your life and then understand and notice, see what it is you're doing now mentally and in action that is a repetition and extension of your childhood and sense of being a failure. Then strengthen the voice of the part in you that helps you step and stay out of unhelpful childhood conditioning. This voice can sound like an observer that notices whenever you fall back into your sense of failure and then comments, here's the I'm a failure story again, or I'm having the thought the trying is of no use. This voice can sound like a loving guide that encourages you to look at things differently. This voice is aware of and reminds you of your strengths and accomplishments. This voice responds constructively to mistakes. This voice believes in you and encourages you to give things a try. This voice can also be a voice that talks back to the childhood conditioning of thinking that you're a failure. This voice can talk back to memories of caregivers, teachers, or others calling you lazy, stupid, or a disappointment. This voice can say, I was never a failure. I was born with unique potential like every other child, but you didn't give me what I needed to succeed 
in my way. This may not have been your intention and you may have had problems of your own, but the fact is it was never correct to call me a failure. Now I take back ownership over my life narrative and identity. I will now start telling the story of my life in a way that acknowledges my strengths, potential, and achievements. And the next step is to give way to these encouraging voices in your actions, to take on new challenges to develop your skills and talents, to create opportunities for you to succeed. These will be steps outside of your comfort zone and you'll have to make room for a sense of uncertainty and discomfort that is a natural part of leaving our comfort zone. At the same time, you'll see how rewarding it is to get out of the fearful part of your mind and step into actual life. I wish you all the best for this. I believe in you. You've got this. You're worth it. You're wonderful. And you have so many wonderful things ahead of you that you can experience and contribute once you dare to. If you'd like to hear more from me, you can sign up for my weekly email newsletter. Till next time, take care. And remember to reclaim the right to decide what the story of your life was, is, and will be.